Is your dog or cat at risk for developing strange wart-like lesions? Before you panic, let me tell you what's going on, what's causing them. Let's talk about oral papillomas in today's video. I'm Dr. M, welcome to VMC. Join me, you'll learn something today. First, we need to cover what is papillomavirus anyway? Well, papillomavirus will cause benign tumors. This means tumors that are unlikely to spread and metastasize to other locations in the body. People often call these particular tumors warts, and we see them around the mucous membranes and in the mouths of our pets. In humans, warts are usually pretty flat, smooth, and round, but that's not the case for our dogs and our cats. Viral warts in dogs do tend to form a little fimbrae, they're called. They look a bit more like a sea anemone or a cauliflower. They have kind of these frond-like appearances a lot of the time. Though sometimes we will see smooth warts in our dogs as well. The classic viral wart patient will be a young one. It's most often dogs and we'll see them come in with these warts around their mouth or their eyes. However, there are some cases where we might see papillomas develop in older patients. If we're noting that the tumors are not classic in appearance or it's a patient that we wouldn't necessarily expect them to develop papillomas, then it's going to be very important that we take a biopsy of them because there are a lot of other tumor types that look very similar, but those ones can be aggressive and malignant and spread through the body. In veterinary medicine, we always talk about how it's impossible to definitively diagnose something strictly based on appearance. So don't be surprised if you are thinking this looks like one thing based on your previous experience with pets, but you go into your veterinarian and they sample it and they tell you it's actually something else. This happens all the time. In people, what we call warts are also because of a papillomavirus. In dogs, we do not tend to call these growths warts. We tend to refer to them as viral papillomas. It is important to note that dogs and people have different papillomaviruses and you cannot spread your warts to your dog or vice versa across species lines like that. We should also note that the papillomavirus is pretty uncommon in cats. It's way more likely to be seen in a dog. In dogs, by far the most common type of papillomavirus is the papillomavirus 1 or CPV1, canine papillomavirus 1. They generally do not grow in singular amounts. If you see one, you are very likely to see a bunch more. So if you find one, you should be checking inside of your dog's mouth and around their face to look for other viral papillomas that will be growing. The papillomas do tend to quickly spread once they start showing up in a patient. So I will often hear from clients that they notice one, but by the time they come in to see me for an appointment, we'll see half a dozen or more on their pet's face. Next, we should address how papillomavirus is spread from one dog to the next. So infection is transmitted through direct contact with the dog that has the oral papillomavirus outbreak or with an infected dog's toys, bowls, anything else that they might interact with. The virus does also need injured skin on the next animal that it's going to impact in order to infect them. Healthy skin will not be infected. What makes this a pain though is that the incubation period is one to two months, which makes it quite challenging to figure out where your dog might have picked it up from because they're not going to show symptoms for a couple of months. Once the actual lesions have regressed, your dog will no longer be contagious. We also need to remember Remember that there are several papillomavirus strains. Although CPV1 is the most common, there are others. So if your dog has been infected with one strain, they won't get that one again, but they could get a different strain in the future. To become infected, your dog does need to have an immature immune system or they need to be on medication that causes immunosuppression. The only times I've come across papillomavirus in an older dog 
have been ones who are on medication that ends up suppressing their immune system for one reason or another. One side effect of using all those medications is that they could have a flare-up of papillomavirus. We also need to remember that at around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, this virus can survive for two months. So it is something that can live in the bedding and bowls and toys of your pet for quite some time. If the temperature is hot, and you're seeing temperatures around 98 degrees Fahrenheit, then this virus will only live for about six hours. Let's talk about symptoms next. Most often, I will see patients because their people have noticed the actual tumor and that's the first thing they saw and that's why they bring in their pet to see me. But sometimes if we are only getting growths inside of the mouth, the owners might not notice those. And so sometimes I will have pets that are pawing or scratching at their face. They might also end up having bad breath where they didn't before, or they might be trying to lick at the affected areas a lot. Very rarely, one of the first things that will be noticed is the pet might have bitten one of the masses causing it to bleed if it was inside of their mouth and so occasionally I will get an animal that is bleeding from their mouth that comes in and I end up diagnosing them with oral papillomas. So if you notice any of those symptoms or you see a mass come up on your pet you do need to book an appointment to see your veterinarian. This is because as we mentioned before it is impossible to accurately diagnose masses just by looking at them and so it is important to consult your veterinarian. Don't be surprised if a biopsy is recommended. We often will, especially if it's a patient that isn't classically presenting with oral papillomas. Now the good thing is that for a lot of these patients, this will be a self-limiting issue and as the body's immune system mounts a response to the papillomavirus and as their immune system matures, they should be able to get rid of these masses on their own. However, if that's not happening, if it's been over two months or the masses are just spreading and spreading so much that it's really impacting your animal's quality of life, then we need to get a little bit more serious about treating these. If the masses have been present for more than two to three months, at that point I will insist on a biopsy if we haven't done one already. I will start treating earlier if the case is severe or if it's impacting the animal's ability to eat or drink. Sometimes we can get secondary infections of these oral papillomas, especially if they're inside of the mouth and they're accidentally being chomped on. So we may need to use pain management medication as well as antibiotics if we're having those sorts of problems. Papillomas can be surgically removed. They can also be frozen off. Sometimes we will crush several of the growths under sedation in order to help stimulate the pet's immune system to start attacking the virus and helping to regress the tumors. In humans, we will use antiviral doses of medication like interferon. However, in our pets, this has shown to provide inconsistent results and it is quite expensive so we don't do that very often. Most commonly we will use a topical medication where possible, obviously inside the mouth that may not be possible. Imiquimib. Imiquim mod. I only ever read this word. I've never actually heard someone say it out loud. <laughs> so tell me if I've got the pronunciation wrong in the comments but imiquimod is the most commonly prescribed topical medication that we're using at this point. It helps to boost immune-mediated inflammation and get the animal's body to start attacking the tumor and helping it to regress. We will commonly see skin irritation where we are applying the topical medication like around the tumor. That is a pretty common side effect unfortunately. There has been a little bit of research showing that maybe azithromycin might be an option for treatment and sometimes we will remove one of the warts and send it to companies that turn it into a vaccine of sorts. This is meant to help stimulate the patient's immune system to specifically attack the 
virus that they are dealing with. The good news is that papillomavirus is rarely life-threatening and a lot of patients do recover fully without any long-term issues from having to deal with this. The exceptions would be cases where we have patients that don't have a normal immune system or patients that are dealing with another disease that's causing them to be immunocompromised. In those patients, we will have to address whatever disease process is causing them to be immunocompromised and that would be more likely to impact their life than the papillomavirus. If you've been on BMC for any period of time, you know that I'm all about prevention where it's possible. And this is a situation where we can do a lot with prevention. It's important that we're always keeping our animals in clean environments and that we are fully cleaning any of their dishes every single day. If there is an animal that is experiencing an outbreak of papillomavirus, we do need to keep that animal away from all other animals of their species because because they are contagious for as long as they have the growths. So if you happen to see another animal that is dealing with growths, then you should keep your own animals away from that one as they are contagious. It's great news, however, that this virus does not cross species. So it is fine for humans to interact with a dog who's dealing with this. This is a species specific problem. Okay, go get some water. Always remember that if you are dealing with an outbreak of this, you must keep your animal fully isolated until every single one of their tumors has fully regressed and then they are no longer considered infectious. Thank you so very much for joining me today and for taking your pet's health seriously. If you have a question that you'd like me to address in a future video, please comment it down below. YouTube thinks that you will like this video. I put up a new video most Fridays and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Keep your pets healthy and happy until then. Bye!